Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shikha Garg. Today we are going to discuss a common cause of infertility specifically in the females that is polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease. It is one of the most common cause of infertility in today's situation, today's world. And there are a lot many causes. Uh, it could be a genetic cause, it could be a lifestyle cause, hormonal imbalance lot many causes which can cause actually PCOS the ultimate result being infertility as a primary cause uh, result and followed by other uh, complications which it can cause because of the imbalance of the hormones and of course also because of the insulin resistance so we will discuss in detail what are the symptoms how to diagnose it what is the treatment options available and what exactly is the cause behind all those uh, PCOS Furthermore, we are discussing all about the polycystic ovarian syndrome that is PCOS. So it's the most common cause of female infertility as I already discussed. So it's the most common health problem in which there are numerous small cysts or fluid filled uh, sacs they are developed in the ovaries and thus it affects the woman hormonal levels. So there may be lot many symptoms, specifically the menstrual cis, uh, symptoms uh, and of course the uh, excessive male uh, hormones and androgen levels. So the important thing is the early diagnosis and treatment along with the weight loss if the person is obese uh, and also the, uh, it also reduces the risk of the long term complications which we will discuss. So causes could be hereditary specifically in the females having mothers or sisters already having PCOS or type 2 diabetes they are more likely to develop the PCOS. Uh, patients having excessive insulin and insulin resistance. So insulin is produced by the beta pancreatic cells. So it actually uh, in the cells become resistant to the insulin. So your, your blood sugar level rises leading to the diabetes. So excess of insulin will be released to compensate for that which may cause androgen production. So difficulty in the ovulation. So it's a kind of vicious cycle. There could be a low-grade inflammation uh, present uh, which can stimulate the PCOS to uh, polycystic ovaries to produce the androgens. Uh, and when the excess of androgens are there, there is a result in the hirsutism and acne. Hirsutism means uh, uh, male pattern uh, of the hair on the cheeks, chin, etc. So what are the symptoms of PCOS? Uh, it may vary. There could be irregular periods, lack of ovulation, uh, there could be heavy bleeding after irregular periods or after missing of periods. There could be acne, male hormones can make the skin oilier. There could be uh, acne on the chest, face, upper back. Hair growth in the women which are not normally present specifically on the face, back, belly and chest could be there. Male pattern baldness, though rarely seen, can be there. Thinning of the hair definitely is present. So there could be a weight gain, especially around the waist area. Skin darkening, dry patches, dark patches of the skin in the from form of the neck, also called as a canthosis nigricans. Uh, headaches, there could be hormonal changes which can trigger that. Difficulty in getting pregnant as there is irregular ovulation there could be small skin tags in, on the skin so if you have to determine if you have PCOS or not your doctor will at least need two to three symptoms which may might include irregular periods or no periods uh, higher than normal levels of hormones uh, like androgens uh, multiple small cysts on the ovaries which are detected with the ultrasonography there are lot many complications which can be caused because of PCOS Commonest is the type 2 diabetes mellitus. So women with PCOS usually have developed type 2 diabetes mellitus. Uh, if a woman gets pregnant, there could be a chances of gestational diabetes that is during the pregnancy. And both the mother and baby can be at risk to develop type 2 diabetes later on in the life. High blood pressure could be there, uh, which can lead to further into heart disease. Uh, and there is a risk of unhealthy cholesterols that is LDL or bad cholesterols level might rise because of the hormonal imbalance. There could be a sleep apnea that is respiratory problems when the person is sleeping. So because of the weight also, uh, because the, there is an overweight or obesity, so sleep apnea can be aggravated. 
देर आर बिकॉज ऑफ द बैड कोलेस्ट्रोल फीमेल कैन गेट अ स्ट्रोक ऑल्सो सो देर कुड बी अ मेटाबॉलिक सिंड्रोम विच इंक्लूड्स ओबेसिटी एंड हाई ब्लड प्रेशर हाई शुगर लो लेवल्स ऑफ द एच डी एल विच आर द गुड कोलेस्ट्रोल एंड हाई लेवल्स ऑफ द बैड कोलेस्ट्रोल दैट इज द एल डी एल सो दीज ऑल कैन इंक्लूड एंड रिलेट टू द मेटाबॉलिक सिंड्रोम विद द इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ हार्ट डिजीज डायबिटीज एंड स्ट्रोक वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड सो इनफर्टिलिटी डेफिनेटली इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज दे कैन सफर फ्रॉम द फीमेल हॉर्मोनल डेफिशेंसी ऑफ द एस्ट्रोजन एंड इम्बेलेंस कैन लीड टू द लैक ऑफ ओवुलेशन एंड दस लैक ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी इट कैन ऑल्सो कॉज डिप्रेशन एंड एंगजाइटी बिकॉज ऑफ द हॉर्मोनल इम्बेलेंस रेयरली एंडोमेट्रियल कार्सिनोमा कैन बी सीन बिकॉज ऑफ द लैक ऑफ ओवुलेशन और ओबेसिटी और इंसुलिन रेजिस्टेंस डायबिटीज एवरी थिंग एडिंग टू द रिस्क so what is the impact of pcos on pregnancy the women who want to get pregnant or who want to conceive uh, they may face a lot of difficulty with the pcos and even without the pregnancy there is a lot of uh, difficulty because of the irregular uh, menstruation specifically for the pcos in pregnancy there could be a chances of miscarriages or a loss of the baby or the fetus before 24 weeks of pregnancy diabetes gestational diabetes that is during the pregnancy diabetics a risk increases for the baby and the child later on also in the life preeclampsia could be there which is the sudden rise of pp uh, for the mother and there could be swelling it could be dangerous to the fetus also and if it is lit, uh, not treated there could be serious complications of liver failure or renal failure so there could be a pregnancy induced high blood pressure also uh, again uh, causing uh, common problems for the fetus like low birth weight placental complications etc there could be a preterm birth because of the hormonal imbalance Uh, and of course because of the lot many complications usually a c section is done so definitely a surgical intervention is also needed which might normally not be needed so what are the lifestyle tips in the pcos so first of all we need to reduce weight if you are excessive uh, having excessive weight or if you are obese uh, it can reduce all those pcos symptoms uh, second other diet changes so you need to take more of protein rich food high fiber food with multi nutrients good nutrition and we need to avoid the high refined carbs sugars and everything so regular exercising is a must anything which includes walking cycling swimming or any weight training so these will actually help to control the metabolic problems and the weight gain which we already discussed and thus it will balance all the hormones and thus the symptoms of the pcos will be reduced so diagnosis of pcod of course it develop uh, typically evaluate women signs and symptoms so we need to get your lab test which includes your hormonal levels which is first of all is fsh that is a follicle stimulating hormone so it is associated with the reproduction and development of eggs in the women and sperms in the men fsh is present both in men and women this test measures the fsh in the blood and of course it will evaluate the menstrual irregularities hypogonadism infertility or any pituitary disorders pituitary disorders are the disorders which are uh, uh, confined to the pituitary which co- releases all those hormones so in the patients with uh, pcos their fsh might come as normal or low the second hormone we need to get tested is the lh that is a luteinizing hormone so it is associated with the reproduction because it is uh, there is an lh surge when there is an ovulation so if the uh, elevated uh, levels are there in pcos it might be a uh, reason of the infertility so another test is the testosterone levels which is the total testosterone so it is usually dominant in the men but it is also uh, present in the females so it is used to evaluate pcos infertility hirsutism because in females with pcos there is a increased level of testosterone causing the male uh, symptoms another uh, hormone we need to get tested is the sex hormone binding globulin that is shpg so it's a protein produced by the liver that transports the hormone testosterone dihydrotestosterone and estradiol in the blood as biologically inactive form so it may be reduced in the pcos 
Another hormone is the AMH that is the anti-mullerian hormone. It is produced by the reproductive tissue uh, that is ovaries in the female. So this test measures the AMH in the blood and uh, it is to use to assess the ovarian function, any menopausal symptoms or anything in the PCOS in the women and increased level can be seen in the PCOS. Another is the prolactin hormone. It is a role usually is considered to be the promote the breast milk production. This measures the amount of prolactin in the blood, but it is also normally present and in specifically in PCOS patients, there would be a higher level of prolactin. Uh, very common is the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So it is present in the blood and it stimulates uh, thyroid and it is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. So in PCOS, uh, women may have normal TSH levels or there may be an increased or reduced TSH level that is the underactive or the overactive thyroid. Anything could be there and it can also cause irregular ovulation or irregular menstruation. So another test for the ruling out the diabetes mellitus is the HbA1c that is the three months sugar test as we have already discussed that in detail in another one of the PPTs. You can see the link below. So it detects the diabetes, pre-diabetes and also uh, helps in the prognosis uh, of the uh, patients taking the uh, anti-diabetic treatment. Another one is the androstenedone. It's an androgen responsible for the sexual differentiation in males and females. So it measures uh, the androsterone in the blood and it is helpful in using uh, diagnosis of the PCOS. So other tests which are not from the lab or the blood test but are very very important are the ultrasonography that is the ultrasound. So it will actually give you the appearance of the cyst fills in the ovary. So there is a number of cysts which we count and according to that only we label the patient as PCOS or not. Uh, another could be the pelvic examination that is done by the gynecologist and for that details are available with the gynecologist. For any questions uh, uh, to make it simplified, I have tried uh, to make it very very simple and easy for everybody. Uh, you are, feel free to ask all the questions, any queries, any doubts. Thank you.